Hello and welcome to another section of this complete Angular course. In this section, we are going to learn all about forms in Angular. Now in Angular, there are two ways to create a form. One way is by template driven form and another way is by using reactive forms. A template driven form is a simple basic form where we use HTML to define the forms. And then on that form, we use some Angular directives to work with that form. So a template driven form is easy to start with and it is based on HTML template. On the other hand, the reactive forms are complex and it provides us more control with the form. Now in a reactive form, instead of using HTML to create the form, we create a model class. So basically we create a TypeScript class and based on that TypeScript class, we define a form. So basically the structure of the form in reactive forms is defined by the TypeScript class. Now we will talk about reactive forms in great detail in our coming lectures. In this lecture, let's learn how to create and use a template driven form. Let's open VS code. And here I have created a brand new Angular project called Angular forms. In this project, I have not done any changes. So if I expand this source folder, if I go to this app folder, and if I open this app component.html, here you will see that we have the default HTML and CSS code. So what I'm going to do is from here, I'm going to remove all these HTML and CSS. Now here, we want to write some HTML to display a form in the web page. And in order to save some time, I already have that HTML written. So let me copy this HTML from here and let's paste it inside this app component.html. And to design this form, I have also written some CSS. So let's grab that CSS from here and let's paste it inside the app component.css file. Okay, with this, let's save the changes. Let's go to the web page. And here you will notice that we have a registration form with first name, last name and email text box, the country dropdown, a radio button for gender and three check boxes for hobbies. And then we also have a submit button. So to display this form here, we have used this HTML. Okay. So this HTML is defining the template for our form. Now to use this form in Angular and access its control values, we are going to use some Angular's built-in directives on this form. Now to work with forms in Angular, the first thing which we need to do is in the app modules, inside this import array, first we need to specify the forms module. And to use this forms module, we also need to import it from Angular slash forms. So this is always the first step when working with forms. Now let's go to our app component.html. And here, if you notice the type of this input element is button. Okay. And its value is submit. Now, instead of specifying the type as button here, we want to specify the type as submit. So when the user will click on this submit button, this form will be submitted. Okay. So when this form will be submitted, the Angular provides us with an inbuilt Angular event, which is ng submit. Okay. And since it is an event, let's find it within parenthesis like this. And to this, let's assign a method and let's call this method on submit. Okay. So when this submit button will be clicked, this event will be raised. And when this event will be raised, this method will be called. And inside this method, we want to do something. So let's copy this method name. Let's go to app component class. And here let's create this method. Let's define this method. And inside this method, let's simply log a message in the console saying that form submitted. Okay. Let's save the changes. Let's go to the web page. Let's open developer console. And let's clear everything here and let's click on this submit button. So you will notice that this message form submitted has been logged here. And from here, the CSS has been removed from this button element. That's because if I go to VS code and if I open app component.css, we are specifying that CSS on the input type of 
button but here we have changed the input type as submit right so let's again change this to submit okay now if i go to the web page this button should have that css all right now here when i click on this submit button it is logging this message but instead of logging a string message what i want is i want to get access to this form element okay so inside this method let's close this let's also close this app module so inside this on submit method i want to get access to this form all right so here what we can do is we can specify a local reference variable let's call it maybe my form and let's pass this local reference variable to this method as its argument okay so now this method is going to receive an argument let's call it form and it is going to be of type html form element okay and here let's go ahead and let's log that form parameter so this form parameter and let's see what this form parameter stores so let's save the changes let's go to the web page let's clear everything and let's click on this submit button so you will notice that now it is logging this form so it is logging the html of that form but here instead of logging the html so instead of getting access to the html of this form i want to get this form as a javascript object or you can say as a typescript object okay so here we have this form from the dom so this form is nothing but the dom object but we want this form as a typescript object all right so for that what we can do is to this my form to this local reference variable we can assign a string called ng form okay so now to this my form we are assigning a value of type ng form okay so and we are passing that ng form to this on submit method so now here we are not going to receive an instance of html form element instead we are going to receive an instance of ng form and to use this ng form we also need to import it from angular slash forms okay let's save the changes now let's go to the web page and let's clear everything and let's click on this submit button and now you will notice that an object of type ng form has been logged in the console if i expand this object we have several properties here so one of the property is this controls property and what does this controls property store let's see that let's expand this let's expand this object and currently it does not have anything okay so here we are getting this form as an object but in that object we don't have these controls to get these controls in this form object we have to do two changes in our form the first change is for each of these input elements we need to specify a name okay so for example for this input element let's specify the name as last name in the same way for the first input element let's specify the name as first name okay in the same way here let's specify the name for this input element and let's call it email let's also specify a name for this country drop down list and let's call it country and for this gender also so for each of these radio buttons let's specify a name and let's call it gender okay so this name is going to be same for all these three radio buttons all right and finally for these checkboxes also let's specify a name so let's call it hobbies maybe okay so let me copy this name and let's specify the same name for other checkboxes in this div okay so this is the first step for each of these input elements we are specifying a name property the name attribute then the second thing is for each of these input elements we also need to use ng model on them and we need not to wrap this ng model within square brackets and parenthesis like this like we were doing earlier okay we can simply use it like this like a directive and we also 
need not to assign any value to this ng model. This ng model will simply tell Angular that this element, this input element is a control of this form. Okay, so if I save the changes now, if I go to the web page and if I click on this submit button and if we go to this controls, here you will see for this controls, there is a property called first name. So the name which we have specified for that input element, with that name, a property has been created inside this controls object. And you will not see the property called last name or email in this controls object. That's because on those input elements, we have not used this ng model. So let's go ahead and let's use this ng model on other input elements as well. Okay. So, with this, let's save the changes. Let's go to the web page. Let me clear everything. And now let's click on this submit button. And now if I expand this controls object, you will see that for this object, we have this country, email, first name, gender, hobbies, and last name as its properties. And the property name is same as the name which we have specified for that input element. So here we have specified the name as last name. So with this name, a property has been created in this controls object. Okay, and this ng form also has a property called value. And if I expand this value property, this value property has the properties with the control name. So here, we have this first name property, this email property, this country property, hobbies property, last name property. And these properties are assigned with the value in that respective control. So for example, in the first name input element, the value is empty string because here we have not entered anything. So that's what is assigned to this first name property. In the same way for the last name, we have not entered anything in this text box. So an empty string has been assigned to this last name property. Now, if I go ahead, and enter something in these text boxes. Okay, and if I select a country from here, let's say Canada, let's select the gender as male, and let's select these hobbies, these two hobbies, and click on this submit button. And now if I expand this, and if we go to this value property, here you will notice that for each of those properties, those respective values which we have entered inside that control has been assigned. So for this country, Canada is assigned, for this email, this value which we have entered for this email text box has been assigned. For the first name, this first name value has been assigned. For the last name, this last name value has been assigned and so on. Okay, so this value property contains the control name as its property and the value of that control as the value of that property. Okay, so this value is basically an object and this object has the control name as its properties and the value of that control as the value of those properties. Okay, and also this controls property which we have here, this controls object, here also we have those properties. So country, email, first name, gender, etc. But these properties are of form control type. Okay, so inside this controls object, we have these properties and these properties are of form control type. But for this value object, these properties are simply a primitive type. Okay, so either they are going to store a string value or a number or a boolean value, etc. These are not storing any objects. These are simply storing the value which we are entering in that form control. Okay, so in this way, we can access a template driven form and then we can access the value of form controls of a template driven form. Okay, so here, when we are assigning this ng form to this local reference variable, we are getting access to this form in form of an object. So basically, we are getting access to this form as this ng form object. And this object has all the required properties which we need to work with the form. So we already talked about this controls property. We talked about this valid prop I mean this value property. Then we also have this valid property. Currently it is set to true. 
because here on this form we have not applied any validation similarly we also have this invalid property which is also set to false again that's because on this form we have not used any validation but when we will use validation on this form and when the validation is not successful in that case this invalid will be set to true and this valid will be set to false then we also have this touched property which is set to true because here we have touched this form as you can see we have entered some value in this form and this untouched property is set to false then we also have this property called dirty and currently this dirty is set to true because here the form value has changed so for example let me clear everything here and let's refresh the page okay so here we have not entered anything in this form we have not touched this form as well so if i clear everything from the console and if i click on the submit button you will see that this dirty property is set to false this dirty property will be set to true when the form changes okay when something in the form changes and since we have not touched this form this touched property should also be set to false and this untouched property should be set to true but if i go ahead let me clear this and if i go ahead and touch this form and now if i click on this submit button you will notice that this touched is set to true and untouched is set to false because here we touched this form but this dirty property is still set to false because this form is currently not dirty because nothing has changed in this form but let me clear this again and if i go ahead and enter something in this form and now if i click on this submit button now this form is dirty and you will see that this dirty property is set to true so this ng form provides us with many useful properties which we can use to work with a form all right now here we are creating a local reference variable and then we are passing it to this on submit method but instead of doing it like this what we can also do is we can use at view child decorator so let's see how to do that so let me remove this argument from here so i'm not going to pass any argument to this on submit method and from here also let's remove this parameter okay and here let's go ahead and let's create a new property let's call it form it is going to be of type ng form and on this form property let's use at view child decorator okay and to this at view child decorator let's pass the name of the local reference variable so that local reference variable name is my form so let's pass that all right now here let's use this form property so for that we can say this dot form with this let's save the changes and the form should still be working as it was working earlier but this time we are using view child decorator so if i click on the submit button we are still seeing that this ng form object is being logged in the console and here we can see all the properties of this ng form object so in this lecture we learned how to create and use a template driven form in angular now in the next lecture let's add some validation on this form